Hello everyone, welcome back to the 4Play channel. I'm Bella. I'm Jace. Before we get into today's video, make sure to leave this video a like. It helps us out a ton. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss whenever we do post a new video. And leave a comment if you had any questions about this video or any video you'd like to see from us in the future. So today is part three of three of swinger myths. And so it's not really a myth, but we're basically saying if something is true or false, if it's a myth or it's myth busted. I've really enjoyed filming this, so I'm super excited to film the third part of it. So if you haven't seen the first two, I'll have those linked down below. But let's go ahead and jump into myth one of this video. The first myth is wearing an anklet means that you are a hot wife. And so this is actually true. Although it, an anklet is pretty generalized, so it's not like you can assume that everybody wearing an anklet is into hot wifing. However, there are certain charms that if you see on someone's anklet, that probably means that they are, which is upside down pineapple or a queen of spades. Queen of spades means that you are looking for BBC. Myth number two is flamingos, and specifically flamingos that you put in your yard, so the little decoration type flamingos. So this one, we're gonna give a partially true. Now, just because you have flamingos in your yard, that does not mean that you're a swinger. But a lot of swingers we have noticed like to associate the flamingo with the pineapple. So even that's not always true. So I mean, if you're wearing a pineapple and flamingo shirt, that could just be, you know, a Hawaiian shirt. But a lot of swingers do like the flamingo pineapple crossover. So I will say probably if you see an upside down pineapple with a flamingo, like all upside down with flamingos, probably, but some people like to use that, some people don't, so we're going to give this one like a partially true. And again, all of these aren't a surefire thing. Mm -hmm. It's just things that are common in the swinging lifestyle that we see regularly, but just because you see people like this in normal like vanilla world, does you cannot expect or assume that everyone is a swinger. But if you are in a lifestyle situation or something and you see it, then it's like, oh, they're doing that because it's a lifestyle thing. Myth number three is gnomes in the yard. This one is false. So for some reason, this got around saying that if you put gnomes in your yard, then you are in the lifestyle. And this is not true. We think more people, definitely more people who are not in the lifestyle have gnomes. Can you imagine just a house that has like, put all the stereotypes, just our see, house, yeah. that we just put it on just to like- The big star. Yeah, the star, the gnomes, the flamingos, everything. <laughs> so myth number four is that all swingers are 60 plus. This is definitely false. Now we will say that our biggest demographic that we see is around 45 to 55 that is the biggest demographic it does not mean that everyone is 60 plus or everyone's even 45 to 55. it's like a bell curve so there's like the the main but then on the left side you're going to get in the younger generation and the right side you're going to get a bit of the older generation yeah so i mean you're definitely going to see people in their 70s you're going to see people in their 20s and it's just going to kind of be like you said it's dispersed so you know you're going to have your late 30s and then 40 and it's just gonna kind of disperse like that. So definitely you can be any age that, you know, is a legal age. Uh, so 18 plus, but I feel like really you don't see much younger than 22, 21, and you don't really see much older than like 85. But for the most part, it's a very big population and not everyone is just 60 plus. And we say 21 because most of the clubs that are out there are 21 up because there's drinking and that's what it is. And that's at least for the US. Yeah. Myth number five, couples swing because they aren't satisfied with their own partner. This is completely false. So being in the lifestyle, typically your relationship is so great. You have so much trust and communication there that you're able to bring this and put it on top. We describe swinging as sprinkles on a cupcake. So you have to have the foundation for the base for the actual cake itself. And it's not even icing, but it's just sprinkles, something that's not necessary, but a fun addition. We truly believe that if you aren't satisfied with your partner to begin with, this is definitely not going to fix anything and will most likely just make it worse and so people who are in the lifestyle if you go to these events and clubs you're not going to see that you're going to see couples who are already strong in their foundation and have amazing communication already at least a majority right? there's going to be the, the outliers but myth number six is that clubs and parties are a free-for-all now this is a very big one that is false that I feel like people really have a misconception of. This is not true at all. It is all about consent, all about respect. It's all about making sure everyone's on the same page and asking for verbal consent. So if you go to a club, don't be nervous that everyone's just gonna be everywhere. It's not like that at all. I said it's all about consent and respect. 
So definitely not a free for all. As a woman, I really feel the most safe and the most comfortable at a lifestyle club. I don't even go to typical like vanilla downtown clubs, uptown clubs anymore. I get harassed every time that I go to those, but at lifestyle events, that happening is so rare. Myth number seven, swinging is always the husband's idea. This is false. It can be anybody's idea. It can be whoever's idea. In our relationship, I was the one who asked the first question. I was the one who asked if he was ever interested in kissing another person. And so it's definitely not always the guy's idea. I think that's just a stereotype that, oh, guys are more they're going to be the ones, they're always going to be the ones who are going to be unfaithful and that's completely false. So we have two little bonus myths for this video. So bonus myth number one is that all swingers are in unstable marriages. We've kind of spoken on little things like this, but that is definitely false. Now I'm sure that there is some unstable swinger marriages, but most likely that is not because they're swingers. Most likely that is because they're having unstable things in their relationship and they just also happen to be swingers. Most swingers have amazingly stable relationships because they're able to communicate openly and they're able to trust and be honest with each other. So for the most part, swingers have extremely stable relationships and the ones that aren't stable probably would have been unstable either way. The last myth is that swinger husbands are cucks. And this is false. Really, I think this is more people who are just not okay with ethical non-monogamy in general, and they use cuck as a derogatory insult. Cuckholding and swinging are two completely different types of kink. And so cuck usually includes some type of humiliation and swinging or hot wifing is usually almost like um, showing off your partner. And so they're definitely completely different. Although there are people who are in the lifestyle and the swinging lifestyle who do also like cuck holding, you can definitely have that as well. But the two are definitely not the same. Another thing that I never get why people say this is because I mean, do they not realize that it's like a, a couples thing? And so, I mean, both couples are, are switching and, and doing stuff with the other couple. And so it's not like the guy's just like sitting there, like he's actually also being intimate with the other person's wife. So, I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> Since everyone is on their own during the lifestyle, if you're into cuck holding, that's great and that's accepted and people are going to respect you for that. But it's pretty much just choosing whatever you want for your relationship. So if you want to do cuck holding, great. If you don't want to, great. But it's not like it's true that every man is. There's just a percentage of people that do participate that that are also swingers. So that is the end of this series of swinger myths and myths busted. But I thought this was such a fun series to do. So I really hope you guys enjoyed all of these. I said, if you haven't the first two we'll have those linked down below but make sure to leave this video a like it really helps us out subscribe to so never we post a video then if you guys have any comments about this or maybe if you've watched all three videos or some we left out drop those down below so we can have a little discussion in the comment session but thank you guys so much for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one bye